What happens when you mix together elements of prog rock, hardcore punk, jazz fusion, noise rock, experimental rock, and minimalism? You might just get math rock. With such an eclectic range of influences, it's hard to grasp what math rock actually means, and even among prominent members of the subgenre, there isn't an exact consensus. What does that mean to you? Math rock usually is stuff that has compound time signatures, like odd meters, yeah. um, and I guess it, it's such a broad term. You get bands like a lot of people think Don Caballero is like the first math rock band, and they're kind of like sludgy and grimy. But then you get a more clean tone math math rock band. Like there's a band called TTNG, and they're like you know they have vocals, and they're more like on the indie side, and it's like very pleasant yeah. to listen to. In the essay, how alternative turned progressive: the strange case of math rock. Theo Kateforce defines math rock as the absence of a steady divisible pulse. However, that presents a few different problems. Technically, a majority of 20th century classical music alongside prog rock and metal could fit under the math rock title. Do bands like Primus or Dream Theater really fit the category despite their heavier, more metal sound? And this gets further complicated when you take into account earlier proto-math rock bands like Black Flag or genres that emerged from a similar background. Is Midwest emo a different genre, or is it a more poppy take on math rock? It becomes difficult to decide when bands like American Football use similar techniques to other math rockers, but not to the same extremes as others within the genre. Tracing its early origins to prog rockers like King Crimson and Rush, math rock takes the idea of polyrhythmic elements and complex odd meters emerging within the genre to the extreme. These polyrhythmic elements weren't exclusive to prog rockers, though. The California-based hardcore punk band Black Flag's 1984 album My War featured very prominent polyrhythms, particularly in the tracks Swinging Man, Three Nights, and Scream. This same band would later record an all-instrumental album in 1985 titled The Process of Weeding Out that dived fully into these polyrhythmic ideas fueled by guitarist Greg Ginn's avant-garde musical aesthetic. In many ways, this could be considered an early proto-math rock album. <laughs> Thanks to the work of underground punk bands like Black Flag that had the majority of their success through college radios, this experimentalist mentality became the groundwork for later indie rockers. It was the burgeoning indie rock scene within the Midwest that math rock truly began to form, with early bands like Kentucky-based band Stint and their 1991 album Spiderland, which features drum-driven music with highly irregular meters, heavy dissonances, and lyrics written as an afterthought. Parallel with Slint emerged the East Chicago-based emo band Captain Jazz, whose use of finger tapping and odd meters would become staples of both the Midwestern emo and math rock genres. Seminal math rock band Don Caballero's guitarist Ian Williams featured a guitar tapping technique that he combined with the band's complex structures as well. Today, many other techniques are combined with open tunings, jazz-influenced chord voicings, loops that could be at home within a minimalist composition, and the use of various effects available to the guitar and other instruments. Meters shift, often abruptly, through different odd time signatures frequently in a quick sequence. While some bands include lyrics within their songs, many other bands within the genre are entirely instrumental. For those looking to get into the genre, a song like Covet's Love Spell is a great example of an instrumental song that incorporates many of these elements already discussed. Delta Sleep's Camp Adventure showcases how a band can incorporate lyrics within odd meters and structures. And for those interested in seeing where the extremes of this genre have been taken, look no further than the math rock supergroup Battles formed by Don Caballero's Ian Williams with their song, The Yaba. Overall, I think math rock as a genre is summed up best with this quote from Nick Hunter and William Covert's article about the history of math rock. The word math is not used as a description of the music's complexity, for it can usually be analyzed and discerned quite easily. Rather, math describes the approach the listener must take to parse the complexities of the music, to use problem-solving skills to unravel the sound and unlock its secrets, much like a mathematician uses logic to unravel the puzzle. Math rock musicians and their predecessors make music that presents itself as delectable puzzles for mathematical listeners.